Hello there, welcome back to Spain. Last time, well, we did the Gemain Epiphanic, and as such, we do have, I believe, uh, some sort of, uh, well, progress towards becoming the Holy Roman Empire. And we're currently at war with Cologne in the Unification War, which basically means that we'll be kicking their asses and taking them, uh, well, hostage. I'm pretty sure that, as you can see, Austria will mostly fight this war force. All I have to do is basically just siege. We're also doing a war on Mali. Basically just trying to grow our shanty a little bit, but uh, not really that important. Um, I've gotten a couple of questions about trade, one in the comments and a couple of messages. So uh, I think the first five minutes or so I'll basically be using to do a little bit of discussion about at least what I know of trade. So the first thing we'll do, we'll go to a trade map mode here. And as you can see, the world itself is split into different trade nodes. Um, all these nodes have a set value compared to or depending on what you make money of and as you can see here the power of each nation is, is shown here as you can see Iroquois and Cherokee they're wielding power because they have uh, provinces in the region and as such to get uh, a trade power from it but we are definitely the big leader here with 103 power same here and also in the Caribbean so as you might see here the uh, the trade is actually going in different directions and you I basically am using the easiest manner of uh, easiest manner of making money here, which is to basically just uh, pounce down the merchant and I have him collect. There is some other ways to do this, and basically what I might actually go ahead and do now is uh, change this up in terms of uh, basically trying to steer trade. So I'll be taking the I think the Caribbean node here, uh, the Mexico one or the Panama and Mexico. I don't actually have to steer trade from them, I could just as well, uh, well at least Panama here, because as you can see, the only where the Panama trade is going straight to the Caribbean. So what I can do, I think, let's take a quick look about how much money I'm making in uh, in trade, 100 ducats a month. That is not bad at all. So you can see here, Panama, biggest, Ivory Coast, Caribbean, Chesapeake Bay, and Sevilla. So, uh, what I might do here is, because as you can see... No, Chesapeake Bay, I might as well just keep, and uh, I don't think, yeah, I can't, because as you can see, uh, Chesapeake goes to London, North City, and Bordeaux. What I could potentially try and do is uh, steer the uh, steer the Caribbean trade node to Seville, but I actually, uh, well, I will be collecting from this trade node nonetheless, so, yeah, as I said, I can forward the trade, I believe I get maybe a little bit more. But it doesn't really matter at this stage. This is probably uh, the best setup I could have. I could, of course, have planned it so that I place a uh, a guy here in in Mexico, steer the trade to uh, to Panama, then steer the trade from the Caribbean to uh, to Sevilla. And I believe I can make a little bit more money by doing things that way. But basically, what you want to do is try to get complete control of one trade zone, get as much power as possible. And if you can steer it to your capital, that's great. But I usually just prefer to collect, and as you can see, I am making, uh, my apologies, I am making quite a lot of money from that, so, can't say I am worried, or would we'll probably not do it anywhere else. But once you actually, let's say, have control over a lot of things, or a big trade zone, like here, I do have control over Brazil, as you can see, and as you can see, it's being sent to the Ivory Coast, and once again, here do I have another merchant, I could potentially try and take complete control, take control of this trade node, but there's no reason for me, because the trade will be forwarded anyways to Sevilla, and as such it doesn't really matter. The only problem here is that it will continue to Bordeaux, so yeah, basically you want to try and make as much money as possible, and having this guy in the Ivory Coast here is probably the best, because as you can see there's local of about 5, incoming of 18, outgoing of 4, so basically I'm making a lot of money. And, well, as you see, I do have fairly limited uh, knowledge of the trade, but it works, what I know. I basically just try and boost my own power in my own trade nodes. I have ships, a lot of them, uh, mostly from the Colonial Empire, but even so, they are basically just protecting the trade nodes that I own myself. As you can see here, these guys are protecting trade in Bordeaux. I do have a little bit of power here, and I don't actually have a merchant there, but even so, it's fair enough to just have them there. I probably should have them do something else. But then trade in Peru. 
They're basically just protecting trade in the nodes that I have power and at the very same time I'm using them as, well at least once in New World, I'm using them as pirate protection. And also while we're at it I might actually, yeah these two are being annexed which in turn will give me a higher trade power in, in the area. I'll be making more money for Chesapeake Bay. I'm a little bit surprised there are actually pirates here. So I might actually have to uh, have to build another navy for Chesapeake Bay. But as you can see here, I should probably also focus on trying to uh, to build a couple of... There are also buildings that will boost your trade power in different areas, as you can see there. So we might as well take a quick look at them. It's usually, I believe, navy buildings, the dock will help a little while, but trade buildings, of course. As you can see, the trade power will increase. And if I'm, my serve, memory serves me correctly, uh, coastal promises give you 1.5 trade power in uh, the node, and inland gives you 1 point. So promises have very high. Well, they have a lot to do with how much trade power you have in the area, and also the node that your capital is in will get an extra five in uh, in that aspect. So that's that's all nice and dandy. But uh, yeah, as I was saying, I'll probably aim at trying to. Uh, fix that over force limits problem, same with probably here. So I'll probably be building some buildings like I did in the Connaught game and as such we'll try to uh, try to make things work. We'll probably also go ahead here and reduce my inflation and as you can see here I'm making 5 dukes a month more simply from doing that and such. It's quite important to keep it low. Kuch and Katya are no reason to convert those as they will most likely be uh, as they will most likely be, uh, how should I put this, uh, sold to my uh, my vassals. But uh, I've been doing a little bit too much of chit-chatting about trade. And, well, there's a little bit to it. But once again, I'll be building docks, I think, here to try and, uh, and boost my naval force limits and all that. And then be, we'll be building more ships and see how, uh, how trade is doing after that. But for the time being, not really that much I can do. No real reason for me, as you might imagine, to try and focus on any trade in India yet. Because I don't actually have anything to focus on myself. My vassals do have provinces though. But even so, it doesn't. It honestly doesn't matter. And while I'm actually on the uh, theme of nifty tricks, there is uh, a hilarious little, I don't know if I should call it bug or a trick going on in the forums right now. Where you'll actually be able to bring yourself to, or I did at least as the Ottomans, I brought myself to negative aggressive expansion. And the way you do this is simply declare war on a one province miner, get 100% war score, and then offer up to give up uh, one province miner course. Because apparently every country that you release in a peace deal nets you a uh, minus 30 AE. In other words, you get minus 30 aggressive expansion. And let's, let's just uh, take a quick look here. If I were to do that, uh, it wouldn't really help. I would have to release a lot of small nations, but if I were to release uh, 10 provinces, or in Afghanistan's case, I'd probably have to release a little bit more. If I were to release uh, 10 provinces worth of 1 province miners, I basically have this co coalition against me gone. And that is hilarious by, by my reckoning, because that means that I can potentially just go ahead and declare war on everything and then basically piece my way out of this but you should test it out if you want to but enough chit chatting from me i'm sorry this episode is already half half halfway done and i've done nothing so i'll just go ahead now fight to one cologne fight to one against mali and then we'll see how we stand afterwards a new heir to the throne a fairly good heir shame 624 can't complain um can't complain about him at all and as you can see, I'll just continue the war. Got him right afterwards, so I stopped last time. And as you can see, we'll most likely get a, a pretty good victory here. Once again, hilarity ensues. Uh, Cologne broke their union with me, basically. And the restoration of union cast a spell in these cases are pretty damn harsh. As you can see, the aggressive expansion I will get in here will basically make sure that I will not have anything to do with the Holy Roman Empire for quite a while. So instead of going for that union, will instead just go vassalization because people will hate me less. That's funny enough, they'll hate me less. So we'll do that, although Union would probably be better because if I inherit them I'd also inherit their elective status. But, uh, well, can't get everything you want, so for now this is what we will be going for. They do have a lot of money though, and wow, are you kidding me?
Let me just <laughs> Cologne has a treasury of 3,300 ducats. Wow. And you never thought of... Well, they have been in my union for quite a while, so I guess that makes sense. We'll, uh, we'll take that. A vassal and a... Well, I'll have to or aim at having my guy not dying for a while, I think, here. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I'm fine. I will need to send a diplomat, though, to make this guy like me more. Otherwise, I might actually end up in trouble, but uh, I should be fine even so. Can these guys march to Burgundy now is my big question. And they can because I have military access, which is great. So all I have to do now is uh, finish up my war with Mali. And then I guess we'll go to some sort of Holy Roman Empire business because, well, right now I'm not really that much else I can do. Um, once again here, I might actually uh, end up trying to declare war on Milan. Simply due to the fact that they do have, well, they do have some very bad allies, but I can potentially release uh, the Swiss. And that should be kind of helpful, I think. But I'm a little bit unsure since, well, most of the cores are missing. So the only real thing I can do here is just wait and wait a little bit longer but it seems that I will at least keep the uh, the crown even if I or this guy dies so uh, that's pretty good I guess but for now we'll just continue uh, continue working on our uh, on way of Mali and then we'll be selling our, uh, our promises that we gained in the last war in India this will be our peace deal here uh, it'll hurt my relations a little bit with uh, with Europe but mostly Mostly I'll be fine, so it's not anything that I need to worry about. Uh, what I think I will be doing here, I think, is actually start causing some trouble for Portugal. Because potentially what I want to do is vassalize them. Uh, they probably hate my guts, or they don't actually hate my guts that much, which is kind of scary or weird. But what I actually want to do, due to the fact that they took this province here, is try and actually keep them alive to some extent. If I can vassalize them, that's great. If not, then, well, I can live with that. I guess I'll fabricate a claim on this colony here, declare a war, take those two, and potentially also declare a war and take Porto and Bragranca, if possible, uh, basically call them uh, myself, or we'll simply wait five years and then sell them back. Uh, and I'll probably also end up guaranteeing Portugal, simply to, to keep them alive, try and get military access afterwards to, um, to well, kick the rebels of Tangiers, because the Portuguese will definitely have some rebel issues. Um, now at least while I'm at it, or while I remember it, I can get my guys of... I actually forgot to send a piece here. Wow, that's that's brilliant. Uh, but I can get my guys off here. And I think I should just go ahead, as I said, and sell this now over to, uh, to LGS. I'm pretty sure they'll actually buy it, which is kind of interesting to note as well. But for now, I'll just focus on getting my... Uh, or removing uh, promises of my hands. And we'll see how things work out after that. I think I'll simply place my troops in Segu to uh, to try and keep some sort of control over the potential rebels that Ashanti will have. But uh, yeah, for now, as I said, sell the provinces that I do not want to get my overextension down. And we'll probably also go ahead and fabricate a couple of claims on the provinces that the... Uh, that the... Uh, uh, that the Portuguese have and potentially vassalize them and basically feed uh, feed North Africa to them which in turn would be uh, kind of hilarious but uh, at this stage not really much else I can do and as you might imagine here I'm actually feeding them uh, these two provinces just add up to about 20% over extension and the AI won't actually take any promises once it's about uh, about above 24% uh, I believe so by simply handing it them over I will not be getting uh, getting into trouble, but uh, well, it's uh, it's a nifty little trick. So let's see here. I have a new cardinal. We have some ungrateful natives. In other words, nothing nothing new under the horizon, as it were. So uh, yeah, as I said, I'll sell the promises, and then we'll see if uh, we end up in a war with Portugal or not. I forgot to mention the trade page itself, which is kind of awkward, but even so, I'll do it quickly now. As you can see here, we do make 120 ducats now a month. 34.8% of my income comes from uh, from trade. Trade efficiency is very important in this act because, well, trade efficiency decides um, how much money you can make from trade, but it also decides something else. I believe uh, it modifies your trade power by half the percentage of trade efficiency. As you can see here, multiply, yeah, as you can see, it's multiplied by 1.34. No, wait, where? Uh, apparently not. Um, I believe it has something to do with it. But as you can see, light chips have very much to do with my my trade power in most places. 
So, uh, yeah, kind of interesting. 70.4. Yeah, I believe this is something to do with how much of the uh, the provinces actually uh, actually own. Transfer from traders downstream. So apparently, yeah, I need to deal with uh, the Portuguese because they have control of Sevilla, and I do not enjoy that. But that's not actually what I'm uh, what I'm talking about here. As you see, money that I'm making, Panama is uh, very much the um, one of the most important things. As you see. I'm making 36 due to the fact that uh, I get some boost from the motion present 10%. Trade power share is at 100, so I get everything for myself. Trade efficiency at 55% gives extra boost. So, uh, yeah, I make a lot of money, but trade steering is basically based on a Navy tradition. A Navy tradition you get through naval warfare, but also through actually protecting uh, trade. So, if you want to be a nation at sea, you basically should have a lot of lightships to protect trade to get your uh, naval tradition up. and Trade income, of course, from trade efficiency, but mercantilism is uh, actually pretty damn important as well. Because as you see, it gives it gives a provincial trade power modifier, which basically is two percent of mercantilism. So my, I believe my, uh, how should I put this? My inland nation now give me one point fifty four one point fifty four trade power, except for the flat uh, one, and I have no idea how much, probably around two twenty five, around there for my my coastal my coastal provinces so yeah I'm trying to give a or give an explanation but as you might imagine I am terrible uh, trying to explain something so I do apologize for it being uh, as much as or pretty much not uh, possible to understand here but I can tell you one thing I can go ahead now and kill off uh, the Portuguese because that will give me a lot more power in the civilian trade node and as such we will be able to uh, to make more money. As you see, Portugal with 272 power, we will 123. So I might actually do this: take the Bordeaux ships uh, that are currently here. We'll join that fleet to get to one, and we'll protect trade in Sevilla instead. That should actually be enough to make me trade leader, and it should also boost my income a little bit. So we'll see how that works. As you see, that change from Bordeaux to Sevilla basically give me quite the superb boost here. I'm now making 25 ducats instead of the 9 and that brings my trade income up to 37.6% and, and well as you can see just trying to keep um, I've simply tried to keep my trade power high in my neighboring nodes and everything like that but as such it seems that it's better to actually try and focus on nodes where I have merchants and as such having more merchants and having a bigger fleet is probably of uh, of the essence more or less but I want to show you something a little bit more hilarious as you see my arm maintenance, fleet maintenance and everything is at full uh, the only thing I could do here is get these two as level 3 a level 3 uh, well guys as well it will well, what would give me about 60 extra? I'll still go positive a month, which is quite hilarious as well. Especially when you consider the fact that I am severely over my force limits, both in ships and army force. Of course, I could always upgrade my army a little bit more. But it shows that if you have a good grasp on trade, or basically if you take North America and take all the trade value there for yourself, you are basically set uh, for your entire game money-wise. You probably won't have any problems at all on that aspect. As you see, I actually have more troops than Russia itself and that is kind of weird in my aspect total ships I'm well far in front of Denmark I can basically run their uh, run the fleet asunder but as you see I actually only have light ships uh, that galley is kind of weird probably gotten from battle transports and a light ship that's basically what my fleet ever is made of because I basically just use it to uh, to protect trade in these kinds of games but I do apologize for chit chatting through an entire episode and nothing happening um, I'll get, leave a warning in the description so people actually realize that this is simply my chit chat about trade and how I view it. Uh, it can be extremely overpowered if you get or build an empire, as you can see. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how, if they actually do something to it. But for now, I have to say that I am I'm happy with it. I might actually try and discover. I think. Uh, well, I might actually. I think I already have, but in trade aspects, try and discover the uh, cost of buyer. Uh, no, I was thinking of trying to 
no. Apparently this isn't an incoming trade from overseas except from, from into Panama. So I might try to discover the entire node or a line to see if that boosts my trade anymore. But for now that doesn't even matter. Um, thank you for watching. Please have a comment, praise criticism, anything you feel like. And I'll see you around next time. Bye. And apologies for, uh, for just chit-chatting through the entire episode. My bad. Bye.